another Paul Bunyan story? Well, let's see. There's been a truckload of stories about Paul. Wait a minute. I hear someone say, who's Paul Bunyan? Well, I better tell you who he was before I tell you what he did. It wouldn't make sense no other way. For those who don't know, Paul Bunyan was a logger. But Paul weren't no ordinary logger. That is fact, he weren't no ordinary human being. Chop! Chop! It was his size. Chop. Paul Bunyan Chop. was bigger than Chop. any man I've ever seen. And bigger than I ever expect to see. Shrunk! Shrunk! Why, when he was only six months old, his ma had to fix him a bed outdoors. Well, now, that there was a big baby. As he grew up, Paul just kept getting bigger and bigger until when Paul was fully grown, he could stand in Illinois and cast a shadow clear across to Kansas. Now, that there is a big, big man. Things went well for Paul. He built up a good logging business, and he was respected. I'll never forget the time Charlie Svensson got himself hung up on a favored log. Well, Paul was right there to see him. One day, a curious thing happened. The crew was eating breakfast and looking forward to a day of felling trees. Then in the distance, they heard a boom. 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 It sounded like Paul walking into woods. But Paul was sitting right outside the door. Sir, they looked through the trees and saw a huge mountain of a man approaching. Crunch. 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 When he reached Crunch. camp, he said, You're Paul Bunyan. I know that from your size. Everywhere I go in these United States and as far north as Nova Scotia, I keep hearing about you. How powerful strong you are, and how ding-dong clever. Well, I'm Hells Helson, Bull of the Woods. And I figure that when there's two men on the face of this earth that are as big as us, they got to meet and see who's the best man. took Held Helson's hand like he was an old lost friend. He said, Held Helson, I've got no quarrel with you or any other man. I've made it a practice all of my life never to use my strength against another man, no matter what his size or temperament. <laughs> Finally, Held roared, You afraid to fight? Nope, said Paul. <laughs> hey, yes, don't believe in it. I don't believe in doing injury to another human being. But I'll tell you what. I'd like you to be foreman of this here logging camp. We can tell a lot more how strong and smart a man is by what kind of logging he does. Harold's kind of grumbled and grunted and said he'd do it just to show everyone. Paul gave Harold his own axe, which was the only one his size, and sent him out with the morning crew. Well, sir, actually they weren't too unhappy to be working under a man like Harold's. 
He was so anxious to show us how powerful he was that he did the work of 60 men. Splash! However, after a week or two, the most interesting things began to happen around camp. The first thing had to do with Paul's hot cake griddle. Stunk. That griddle was so big, on a cloudy day, you couldn't see across the thing. The grease that six cooks skated around with slabs of bacon tied to their feet. Well, that same morning, Hot Biscuit Slim poured on two tons of batter, as usual, and waited for it to cook. <laughs> Chunks of hot cakes as big as boulders went flying in all directions. Do you know what caused that explosion? It seems that someone had dumped a case of dynamite in the batter. And it wasn't hard to guess who did it. <laughs> well, they figured Paul would blow up. But he didn't. A couple of days later, Paul asked Hells to clear a road leading up to a redwood stand he'd found in Oregon. The crew didn't see how Hells could bungle this job, but that's because they just weren't using their imagination. When Paul came to inspect the road, he found that it twisted and turned and snaked around so many curves that men going up the road met themselves coming back. The men all held their breath, waiting to see what Paul would do. Well, he took Babe, his big blue ox, and... Oh, I guess I'd better tell you about Babe, the blue ox. Well, Babe was an ox. <laughs> and he was blue, and that would be unusual right there. But Babe was also the biggest blue ox in all creation. Why, he was so big that one day an eagle started out to fly from one horn to the other. Well, when that eagle started out, he had a full head of hair. But when he reached the other horn, he was bald. A bald eagle. Anyhow, Paul hitched his blue ox to one end of the road. Paul held the other end and shouted, Okay, babe, pull away! The ox pulled that road out straight as an arrow. As a matter of fact, Paul had 22 miles of road left over that he cut off and sold to the government at a handsome profit. The curious thing about all this is that instead of Paul getting peeved, it was Hells who seemed to be getting redder and redder every day. Of course, there has to be a limit to a man's patience. And this limit was reached the day Hells took it out on Babe, the blue ox that Paul loved so much. But he did, Buzz. He fed that poor, dumb mountain of an animal 14 tons of poison sumac. Well, that sorry blue ox developed the biggest case of hay fever you ever saw. <laughs> After a while, Babe recovered and Paul was able to turn his full attention to Hells. Hells, Helson, I wanna talk to you. And with that, he led Hells out across several states and up onto Mojave Mountain. <laughs> Paul told Hells, 
you take this and write on this mountain a hundred times, I will never again hurt a dumb animal. Well, hell's was first relieved, then angry. <laughs> With that, the two of them got to whacking away at each other with their fists. After three days of the most awful noise, the mountain, well, it was born clear away by the scuffling of those two giants. Yes, sir, yes, pulverized to dust and sand. In fact, it's no longer called Mojave Mountain. It's called the Mojave Desert. But they weren't finished yet. They fought each other through the state of Arizona, gouging out the Grand Canyon. They carved it a cliff in upstate New York, creating Niagara Falls. They plowed a furrow right up the center of the country that became the Mississippi River and knocked each other down a half dozen times, <laughs> creating the Great Lakes. To climax this fight of the century, Paul landed one final blow that sent hell sailing up into space where he eventually hit the moon and was never heard from again. Paul Bunyan. Now that was a big, big man. of John Henry, and I'll tell it like I heard the tale. Big Ben Tunnel beat him down. Oh, yes. You can hear the train whistle well. As a young boy, John Henry took a hammer and said, now there's a wondrous thing. He swung it down on a rail he found just to hear that hammer ring. Just to hear that hammering. John Henry took his hammer to the railroad to show them what he could do. They sent him to drive and railroad spike. He drove them hard and true. He drove them hard and true.
John Henry went to the section boss, and he asked him, what are we going to do? The answer he heard made his hands turn cold. The boss said, we'll tunnel this track right through. We'll tunnel this track right through. The shaker held a drill against the mountain, and John Henry struck the first blow. The men all cheered, but Polly and feared, and John Henry said, let's go. But they weren't making any speed. And then on the 66th day, the section boss said, I'm bringing in a steam drill now. The country is waiting and winter's coming, and we've got to get through somehow. He loved his little Polly Ann, but he felt his veins pop and he couldn't stop. John Henry was a steel driving man. Polly Ann took her little boy and turned away and started walking down the track. 
She knew right then for sure John Henry ain't never coming back. John Henry went around like a rumble in the ground. Could John Henry stand that pace? Then with one mighty blow, John Henry broke the tunnel through and said, said, I, I, I beat that steam drill down. Yes, I did. But I'm dead.